the father and the son and the holy spirit amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen father we thank you we praise you we bless you we adore you master we we give you glory we give you honor we thank you for this opportunity lord every day you are allowing us to have your bread as your word says give us today our daily bread oh lord this is uh, this is our spiritual bread which is bringing us closer to you and making us better people as we live in the earth to fulfill your plan we make all this uh, efforts and uh, for your glory and uh, for our growth in you in jesus name we pray amen dear heavenly father uh, we thank you and we glorify your name and we thank you lord for your presence in our lives for a word in our life and we thank you lord for bringing all of us together to listen to your word and to be touched by your power dear lord i pray i give this evening into your hands and lord i pray that you open up the scriptures and lord i impart the new anointings into our life to strengthen us with your strength lord i pray for all those who are joining in uh, pour out the spirit of unity in our hearts uh, strengthen us with your strength activate all the charisms in us and especially the healing gifts and i also pray that you bless each members of the family lord praying that each one will come into your relationship with you praying that they will be filled with your holy spirit and come into a powerful fellowship with the holy spirit and lord i pray for those who will be watching through the youtube fill everybody lord with your holy spirit and power activate your giftings in each one of them and i pray for all the persecuted christians especially praying for those who are in chatisgad I pray for each one to be divinely protected. Keep them covered under your blood. Be with them in a special way. And I pray for all those who are uh, persecuting them, Lord. Grant them the grace of repentance and conversion. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we all, we'll all pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Build a wall of fire around us. Build a wall of fire around us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your angels encamp around us day and night. Let your angels encamp around us day and night. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. Teach us and guide us. Teach us and guide us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus in Jesus name. So we have been learning about the gifts of healing, and we were learning that how uh, bitterness and forgiveness can prevent us personally to receive the healing touch of the Lord, and also for those we pray when the, there is unforgiveness in people's heart. So that's why it's important that we practice uh, walking in love, and we also teach others before we pray for them that they need to forgive. And the second uh, uh, important point that we picked up is about faith. We we, we can find in the scriptures that uh, when when there is faith for healing, uh, the power in the gifts of healing will flow into into our lives or into their lives. Acts chapter fourteen verses, uh, verses nine, verses eight and nine. Or now, can also you can read eight, nine, and ten. Now at uh, Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was a cripple from birth who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well. And said in a loud voice, "Stand up, st stand upright on your feet." Yes, and yes. he sprang up and walked. And when yeah. Crowd... yeah, and in Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use, could not use his feet, and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. Just imagine his condition. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul looking at him intently. and seeing that he had faith to be healed said in a loud voice stand upright on your feet so you see paul was preaching and he was looking and hearing attentively what paul was saying and paul was able to see faith in him 
and bible says that when he prayed uh, the person started getting up and walking mm. so we see that uh, you know many times men and women of god they speak uh, scriptures that develop the faith in the people who are waiting for healing they'll give examples also connected with healing so those things will increase the faith in people's heart so regarding the manifestation of gifts of healing a uh, faith is a important factor so that uh, with faith when we uh, desire we will be healed and we see one another example here uh, when because lack of faith the healing could not take place matthew 13 58 Matthew, thirteen verses fifty-eight. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Yeah. And he did not do many deeds of power there because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. Jesus Himself had so anointed, but did not do the miracles because he he saw unbelief in them. So faith is very important factor in, in order for us to receive healing, and in order to administer healing to others, uh, we need to see that they have faith. Now, many times, what happens? We have grown up in a background. when we don't uh, we, we have not heard much about healing so we do not have faith for the healing we do not believe in the healing we don't believe in the healing ministries we don't believe that god is alive and active to heal us so that is why many of us miss the healing touch of the lord and that is why these things have to be taught again and again we have been so beautifully and very powerfully taught that jesus died carrying all our sins and that is very much engraved in us but again the same scripture tells us by the wounds we by his wounds we are healed so this same scripture tells us by his wounds we are healed so um, because these things have not been taught um, we we lack that uh, faith to believe for the healing so when you believe you are putting a demand you are putting a demand on the healing anointing we know about the woman who was suffering from bleeding for many years she put a demand by faith she put a demand there are so many people moving around jesus and many were many many were touching jesus many many were moving around him many of them were must most probably must must be touching him also but uh, they were not healed no not that they did not they did, did not need a healing they might have need a healing many of them may be sick among them also but this lady put a demand so faith puts a demand faith puts a demand on healing in fact this lady yes brother no 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 so uh, so there is a very interesting um, you know uh, fact uh, truth actually today shared by uh, our our priest who said the holy eucharist today we are also celebrating the conversion of saint paul okay conversion of saint paul so what he saying he's a uh, he's a uh, psych- psychologist uh, this father is a doctorate uh, and uh, very very deep spiritual man he saying that you know when you have a, a spiritual experience for the spiritual experience to actualize in a person's life there is a time frame okay there's a time frame and now it is proven it is proven by scientifically that it takes 24 26 weeks for the brain to map those moments in in your brain okay brain takes 26 around 26 weeks to map those experiences in your brain then it takes another 24 uh, weeks to connect those you know uh, experiences so that we actualize that experiences in our lives and become a habit 
and in this process in this process we do if we do not relive that experience which means we do not meditate we do not uh, go deeper into that experience then it you will not have an impact in your in your life that experience will become you know no experience for for a, for a person who just ignores it but for a person who carry on that experience it will become a life transforming experience for that person in fact he gave an example paul after this experience of uh, you know falling from the horse back of the horse he did not just go and preach the word of god he lived at the experience for 3 years three long years and from and he learned more jesus taught him probably others would have taught him and he lived that experience more deeper and from there his journey was you know there is no looking back on him even if you look back if you even look at the word where mother mary she the word of god says she ponders on what uh, you know what the what the angel said she ponders she meditated on the word of god so this is exactly what need to be done as a part of our you know contribution or our response to a godly experience for for us to have and to sustain in that experience and experience a transformation uh, in our lives so i just wanted to you know since it is since it's faith that we are discussing yeah. this makes yeah. a lot of sense for us to or think like that it is not just one experience and you come you become overnight a saint that is not how it works it works you need to give time you need to cooperate with that experience carry on that experience even if you are falling in between father was telling sometimes you become tired sometimes you become you know uh, sick you you will have a tendency to fall fall out of that but if you are if your goal is uh, not uh, you know wavered you have easily can get back and continue in that experience and, and 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 lead that to a transformation i think ever since i got this understanding i have told a couple of people and it made a lot of sense to me and just because brother is talking on the faith angle i think it will make a lot of sense to strengthen us and deeper us in this faith yeah 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 so here you have to understand one very important fact is that uh, don't wait for an emergency absolutely absolutely don't wait for an emergency a day to day life we have to develop that faith yes that is you have to live in that experience you have yeah, to yeah. just to say that okay i got a faith today tomorrow if you don't you know ponder we don't live in this yesterday's faith and just leave it okay i got it and it, it may not happen you need to that is that is the labor you know uh, johnson secura uses this word, word labor very very strongly our labor is to relive or carry on that experience that god has put into our heart it might be on small thing but that small uh, you know revelation that god has put is putting into our hearts is enough for us to live the whole life and that is something which we need to labor we need to cooperate with the holy spirit and once we do it it is going to be something which is drastically different uh, in our lives yeah yeah so faith is something that put demand no put demand demand for healing or for a miracle or for a breakthrough and that you see in the luke chapter 8 verses 43 onwards if you just read you can understand so many people were around jesus there's a big crowd around him and yeah. many may be touching him also but nothing brought any difference people were touching him the people were excited about jesus they were all around him they may be pushing him pulling him and uh, you know they may be touching for some blessings also we don't know please read that look uh, chapter for the chapter i look 8 43 onwards hmm and the woman who had uh, who had had a flow of blood for 12 years and had uh, spent all her living upon physicians and could not be healed by anyone came up behind and touched the fringe of his garment and immediately her flow of blood ceased and jesus who was in, who was, who jesus said who was it that touched me when all denied it peter said master the multitude surround you and press upon you but jesus said someone touched me for i perceive that power has gone forth from me and when the woman saw that she was not hidden she came trembling and falling down before him 
declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said, yeah, yeah, this lady, you see, she put a demand for healing by faith. Hmm, correct. And the, the last word also you can read, 48. And uh, he said to her, daughter, your faith had made, has made you well. Go in peace. Yeah. Then Jesus asked, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and press in on you. So there was a touch that, uh, that, that, that performed that miracle. The power of God flowed out of Jesus. Into, in, he felt the, flowing, the power of God flowing out of him. So that is what we say by faith you can put a demand. Mm. So don't wait for an emergency. That yes. is something you have to remember. We need to daily you know, exercise the gift of faith. Exercise, exercise the gifts God has given us. Everybody has been given a measure of faith. Mm. Everybody has been given a measure of faith. Mm. And that, that faith we can use. We can learn how to develop that faith. See, Mm. Faith for finances. No, yeah. it's something like you have to first believe God for a thousand rupees. Mm. And then when you see that miracle happening, then your faith will increase. You believe God for five thousand. Mm. Then you believe God for ten thousand. That is how the faith develops. In the same way, healing also, we can, by believing, we can put a demand for healing. When you look at like the ministry of Jesus, many people around him put a demand for healing. And they were healed. And mm. what did Jesus say then? A daughter, your faith has made you well, go in peace. Mm. Your faith, your faith has made you well. Mm. So there is something called, you know, from my heart uh, to believe for the healing. We can again find that in uh, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 onwards, 21 to 28. Matthew? Uh, 15. Matthew 15. 21 to 28. Uh, and Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behind, behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came and cried, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the, to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs that eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Yeah. So first thing we have to remember that healing and deliverance is children's bread. Yeah. So for the chosen ones, uh, the healing and deliverance is, is the bread from heaven. That is one thing we have to remember. Here you see she puts a demand for healing. And her daughter got healed. Mm. So that's what faith does. Yeah. And what, and what did Jesus say? Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Mm. Great is your faith. Yeah. That is why faith is very important when it comes to gifts of healing. Yeah. In fact, I, I remember your, the example that you gave, I think, a couple of days back. A person who said, uh, who wanted to, you know, uh, pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, who said, I don't want to wait for, uh, you know, two, three years. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That person prayed for <laughs> eight hours, eight hours every day. You know? Eight hours, yeah. So, in fact, this is a response to the faith. See, he yeah. would have probably had some spark in his heart where he believed that he would get the power of the Holy Spirit, and he he, he responded, or rather, he labored to that, uh, you know, that experience that he had. Is what, uh, right? Right, and, right, right. And he is still uh, active, brother. Yeah, yeah, he's very active and very powerful. Okay. Uh, we can see one more in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Five, five, five onwards we can read. 5 to verses uh, 10. 
As he ended, Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, begging him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered him, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only say the word and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority and soldiers under me. And I say to one, go and he goes. And to another, come and he comes. And to the slave, to sl and to my slave, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly I say to you, even in, not even in Israel, I have found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. So this is called putting a demand by, by demand for healing by faith. Mm. Now, how did this man express the faith? For I, for I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go and he goes. And to another, come and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed. In your version, is written, Jesus marveled. Mm. Jesus was amazed to see that kind of faith. Mm. So faith puts a demand for a breakthrough. Mm. Faith puts a demand for a healing. Mm. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, truly, truly I tell you, in no one in Israel I have found such faith. Mm. I found such. So he expressed that faith by the words that he spoke. When St. Paul had to pray for a person, he saw that person has faith inside him. Mm. But here this man expresses the faith through the words and, 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 and then that, that in his uh, son is healed. Mm. This is what we see when he put a demand for healing by faith. Mm. I think uh, Romans 10, 17 is one important word. As I told earlier, that many times, you know, we are not able to believe in healing because we have not been taught much about it. Mm. So once that teaching will come, automatically people will, will have a lot of healings happening. Why? In the charismatic movement, so much healings were happening because they were speaking uh, testimonies of faith. Testimonies that uh, the people were got to heal and all this they were sharing. So people had the faith, in, faith level increased, you know. And people started walking from here and there. Paralyzed people here and there all started walking, you know. Romans 10 17. So faith comes from what is heard and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. Yeah. So faith comes from what is heard and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. Or as you said, the preaching of Christ. So that is why whenever we pray for someone, it's always good to share something from the scripture about Jesus about his ministry, about how he healed people, and through the word of Acts, through the, um, from the Old Testament and all, and, and uh, bring them to a point where the faith can increase, and then we pray for them. And that is what happening in the retreats. People say, why do I have to go for a retreat? You have to go for a retreat so that your faith can develop. You come to an atmosphere where the, the presence of God is present, and where you can increase your faith for your for a breakthrough in your life. So many testimonies were there in divine. I remember divinity center that increased the faith of people. A lot of signs, wonders, and miracles that people had received. They were sharing what happened, and uh, powerful things were happening. So faith comes from hearing and hearing the word, and the word comes from. Preaching Christ. So if we teach only that Jesus, Jesus died for our sins, people are believing, people are going for confession and having their sins forgiven. So we have to believe that we have a Lord who heals us. 
Look at Abraham, Abraham chapter 5, I think. That we have. Yeah, Abraham, Abraham. Yeah, chapter 4. Genesis, is it? No, 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 Romans. Uh, Romans chapter? Chapter 4, verses 17 onwards, you can read. As it, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the, of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and call into existence the things that, that, that do not exist. So he believed in a God who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Mm. So here it is all each one's imagination, right? Or experience that makes uh, these, uh, you know, make the faith grow in you, isn't it? Either, either Abraham would have seen uh, things happening uh, where God is creating from nothing or he would have uh, imagined that God could be God. God would be able to do this, isn't it? it, it, it no, Abraham might have heard about the creation of the world. Yeah, so it could be some of that. Some of it, uh, yeah, he could have create. He would have heard about God. Yeah. Or he could have experienced God. Yeah, he might he might have heard about God many times, and he might have heard about how God created the world. Uh, and he and he has his own experience with God. Hmm. So all the, all those things has had developed a faith in him. And here also there's a verse verses twenty. Or yeah, verses 19, 19, 19 and twenty. He did not weaken. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead, because he was about hundred years old. Or when he considered the ba barrenness of Sarah's womb. No. Distructs made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. No distress made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Mm. This is as you praise God and worship him, the faith level will increase in us. Praise and worship will cause the faith to increase in us. Hmm. And here you see about Abraham, he, he, he did, not, um, did not doubt, but he believed and he saw the miracle. A friend of mine tells very beautifully, if you, if you are having a lot of loans and if you have to pay back the loan and you are in trouble, it depends how you believe. If you believe the supernatural, God is going to help you to recover from this, God will do it supernaturally. And if you believe that if you are you're going to work, go out, work and make money and give back the loan, that will happen. That also the Lord will help you. And if you believe that you take another loan from somewhere else and try to knock at the bank's door, if you believe that God will open the door for you also. So he tells always very beautifully this particular life, his own life he has seen. According to your faith, it will be done to you. So according to your faith, I believe that God will provide me with through others. God will provide me with through others. If I believe God will provide me through bank, the bank will open a door to give me the loan also. Hmm. That's why faith always puts a demand on healing. So personally, we need to develop this faith, this kind of faith in us in a day-to-day -day life. So that when an emergency comes, uh, we, we will be ready. When an emergency comes, we will be always ready. So faith is very crucial in the gifts of healing. For the healing anointing to flow, the faith is very crucial. You know, many times, you know, men and women of God, uh, when, when people are praising and worshipping the Lord, uh, they come down and lay hands on people. You know, um, you know, on whom they lay hands? First, those who have a glue on the face. I remember Sagwar Thoti brother, when he just, before he starts praying, he will just look around and he will you look around and call someone from the crowd and lay hands on him. And on whom they will lay, those who are already touched by the power of God. Those who are glowing, you know. And what happened then? The power of God gets triggered. As soon as he lays hands on that person, the person is under, comes under the anointing and automatically there is a trigger there. Then after that, when he lays hands on people, people get filled with the Holy Spirit and they start falling or whatever manifestation. 
So faith always puts a demand. So faith is a crucial thing. And this coming days and all, we have to develop a faith. You know, there is one complaint that Jesus said, you know. How many of you remember that? Uh, Luke 18 verses 8. When he comes on earth, will he find faith? Yeah, yeah. Look okay. from the quotation. I tell you, he will vindicate them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So that is a scenario that we are moving, you know. Because with so many crises coming on the earth, you know, there is always a probability of people losing the faith. We will losing the faith. That's why we all have to understand it's precious as gold and develop it by thinking about the word of God, praying the word of God and uh, uh, what you call it, saying the word of God, standing on the word of God in different situations, in small, small situations in our life, stand on the word of God. You know? And then you will you'll see the breakthrough coming and then your faith will increase. Your faith will increase. So that is how you develop that faith. So there are a lot of crises coming on. See, when Corona came, uh, the flood came in Kerala. You know, flood came when you got some. Many of them lost that, uh, what, that powerful faith that many had. Then the, the Corona came. So many things, you know. So like that, many things will come. We have to keep our faith burning. We have to keep it alive and active. So Jesus will say that uh, um, that your faith has saved you. So develop that faith and uh, uh, for our own healing also we need to develop the faith and we also need to develop others' faith for their healing. Especially when you're going to pray for a sick person, we need to just simply go and praying may not be enough. Sometimes you have to share one or two experiences of you yourself prayed and people got healed. Hmm. That, that, that is very important. Then they, they, those, they will trust in your prayer. That is how the, a lot of healings are happening in various homes, in hospitals and other places. People go and pray and they tell, I said I had gone there, I prayed like this, uh, that this happened and I went there, went here. So then when people listen, oh, they saw this brother or this sister or this father will pray, healings will happen. So they open up their heart and they start believing, you know. It is important because that's why when I, with the first quotation that you read, Matthew 13, please look into Matthew 13. Verses 54 to 58, you can understand why Jesus uh, could not heal at that time. You cannot do many deeds of power. You can, when you read this, you can understand. Matthew chapter 13, 54 to 58 onwards. <laughs> Should I read? Yeah, yeah, I can read, brother. When yeah. Jesus had finished these parables, he went from there, went away from there. And coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and that these mighty works and these mighty works? Not this, the carpenter's son is not his mother called Mary, and are not his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, and are not all his sisters with us. Where did this man? And he. Yalla, life so long never come. She comes and takes from the house. Six, six stroke seven ma. Six stroke forty. And they do Joseph, not to... Yeah, yeah. So I, I am just trying to uh, mute uh, somebody who went on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. Uh, let me just. Uh... <coughs> I'm not able to get across the. 
ஒன்ஸ் and he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief yeah so they did not believe the instrument hmm they did not believe the instrument so it is also important that we believe the instrument who carries the power of god to heal so that is why saint paul you see many of his writing he speaks about what god did through him hmm he speaks those things what god has done through him so automatically hearing that is not because of pride not because that they, they want them uh, uh, the people to know them who they are and all that's not the reason when a genuine man of god is speaking about uh, about the healing that had taken place in his life it is for us for our faith to increase mm. the reality that the god heals today and he has given me or you the anointing to heal so if you believe we'll pray now and we we can be healed hmm so it is not because of pride we should not think like this sometimes we may misunderstand also or oh, that fellow came and he started telling or oh, i went to that home that happened this happened and all that's they are telling so that to increase the level of faith in us why why, why did the woman who touched jesus was healed she had heard about the healings that had taken place in the life to the ministry of jesus she had might have heard it many many times my my my, my mummy was healed with the same problem the bleeding problem mummy had bleeding for 8 years and you know one day she took the bible and said lord talk to me and when she opened the word of god she saw the portion that this lady was healed you know and as soon as she saw the portion as we reading she got healed she got healed so that's why when you share these things people get you know people get they open up and they increase in faith so they can be healed so faith plays a very big role and then we have to protect our faith you know of that our god is alive and active not a historical thing you know having faith that jesus was born in bethlehem and he died in jerusalem and is one of the apostles that come to india those things are very good but the reality that have faith that god is real and active and powerful and faithful and faithful so that kind of faith we have to have that that is the faith that we have to develop so don't wait for crisis don't wait for difficult times pray uh, read the word of god more and more meditate on the scriptures and allow god to open up the scriptures so that faith can increase in us any anybody got any question here regarding one question that was put up when as talking about the gift of faith that um, does our faith matter when the gift of faith is in function when somebody is having gift of faith and he is using that gifts that time the faith is not necessary it will be god's initiative like my mummy got healed when she opened the scripture she did not open the scripture for the healing she did not open the scripture believing that she will be healed she just opened the scripture just to uh, know what the lord is telling her so there are time when god takes an initiative but always god doesn't take the initiative so we need to have faith and believe for the healing that's why we should always pray lord help my unbelief hmm so that can god can give us the grace that we need to develop our faith he has already given us there is a measure of faith in each one of us the bible says 
there is a measure of faith in each one of us. So there is no one who has not been given a measure of faith. So it's all up to each one of us how you develop it. If you water it, if you feed it, if you put fertilizer and all and develop it, you grow. Like you said, somebody comes to know the Lord, gets a spark and he ignites it no? by getting involved with in, in, getting involved 100% mm -hmm. with the move of God in his life. So he, he grows very powerfully. St. Mm -hmm. Paul had an experience and Bible says he spent time in prayer. He had, so he spent time in prayer and that, that ignited the experience that he had. Any, any, anybody got any question regarding faith? So these are two very <coughs> two very important aspects where we need to forgive others and have faith in our, faith in God to heal us. And that is how the gifts of healing function. And I as you, I, if you remember very well, I, the, the word says gifts of healing. So we saw about the inner healing, and then second we saw about the physical healing, and third we spoke about the spiritual healing also. A spiritual healing is where we are delivered from oppression of the demonic spirits. Mm. And it is called deep healing. It is called deep healing. Where the roots of the demonic roots from our life are uprooted and where the healing anointing flows into us and make us complete and make us whole. And we saw in many places that, that, that we saw how Jesus, somebody came to him, was not able to speak. And when Jesus casted out the demon that is preventing him from speaking, he started speaking. So there are various kinds of uh, spiritual healing that takes place in our life. Certain habits are stuck to us. That also needs a healing. Certain bad habits, certain habits which doesn't please God are stuck to us. They have to fall. Bible says when Ananias prayed for St. Paul, laid hands and prayed for him, scales fell from his eyes. Mm. To read that word, you can see Acts. Yeah, Acts chapter 9. Verses 16, uh, verses 7, 17 onwards. So Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me that you may reign, regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. And then he rose and was baptized. And he took and took food and was strengthened. For several days he was with the disciples at Damascus. Right. So, the, so there is a healing that is, there is a healing called spiritual healing or you can call it a deep healing where you are delivered, where delivered, set free from various oppressions mm. and even possessions also. There are temporary possessions also. You indulge in certain things and suddenly some kind of spirit bondage gets into your body. Mm. You know, and those, those kind of bondages will leave when you spend time in prayer, reading the Bible receiving the Holy Communion, going for confession, automatically <coughs> they will get delivered. Mm. But there, there, there are some stubborn, uh, uh, what you call, stubborn, stubborn spirits that function in certain people where they are, what you call, possessed. That's what church, the church calls exorcism. And church gives authority to certain fathers to exercise that authority. Mm. So there's a reality of spiritual healing. I think I, I remember telling about uh, uh, Brother Demenstein. Demenstein is in UK. He is a very anointed Catholic, having various charisms functioning in him. He himself shared his testimony <coughs> that after he came to know the Lord, he was, he was with hard metal, you know, hard metal music and all. He was involved with hard metal music and, and drugs and all. So uh, when he, was, he came to know the Lord and he wanted to grow in the Lord. But uh, one year of systematically praying, uh, visiting the sacraments and all, he was not growing up. So by God's grace, he met a deliverance minister. When he prayed for him, he got delivered mm. of some kind of demonic oppression on his life. 
and he says from that day onwards i started growing spiritual so these things will remain hinder our healing he, he, he hinder our spiritual growth he hinder our prosperity our blessings also so there is a healing that so many husband and wives they keep fighting fighting no matter how many retreats they have attended no matter how many counsels counsel they have gone through they are all there, there there is a probability that most of them have to go through some kind of spiritual healing hmm so it is a reality the spiritual healing is a, i have seen this in own eyes so it is a reality okay brother we those who those, those who's friends relations have gone through the situation only you can know what actually it is yeah great time no uh, yeah yeah so we love yeah so we'll come we'll pray and we'll, anybody got any question open your heart ask the lord to increase your faith let us all pray lord increase our faith increase our faith let lord increase our faith let's all pray hallelujah thank you lord shara bara bara riba shara baha bariya hallelujah hallelujah praise jesus thank everybody open your mouth brother you have unmuted everybody hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord shara bara bariya shara ba we pray the signs wonders and hallelujah hallelujah so the lord increase our faith in all the hallelujah 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 love you lord all the power of the lord comes all the things of this Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
God is showing a person somewhere uh, and that person is doing something uh, with the grills and uh, God is blessing this person and uh, I saw a colorful umbrella and the next vision uh, uh, it's a little strange and uh, there's a drain and all of a sudden a slipper one slipper fell into this drain. Nobody could uh, stop it. And the slipper seems to be not a lady's one, but seems to be a gent's one. I didn't get the meaning of it, but I saw clearly. Lord is healing, giving a spiritual healing to someone who is not able to have peace, you know, not having a peace of mind in your day-to-day life. The Lord is healing that a spiritual healing is taking place and the Lord is healing that area and the Lord is giving you a peace. Right. Any, anybody else want to share any scriptures, anything? We'll close, brother. Yeah, yeah, brother Joseph, we'll close and we'll come back tomorrow. We'll learn much about spiritual healing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Bye-bye.